Hi, hello and welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I filmed a sit down tacky video. That's a lie, I need to get ready with me, but I was kind of doing other stuff. But today I thought that I would go through my main tropical or international fieldwork tips. I have been on fieldwork now for six weeks, which is crazy. I'm nearing halfway. I am working in Ecuador, for those of you who don't know, and I am on the border of the Amazon and the Andes. I'm not that remote. I am living in a city. It's very small. It's the equivalent to like a small UK town. But there are still things that I wish I'd known before I came or tips and tricks that I was given by people who had done field work in the kind of global south before that have been vital to me. So I have written them all down on this very, very scruffy piece of paper from one of my notebooks and I'm going to quickly run through them with you. First things first though, how cute are these earrings? I got them yesterday from an indigenous woman in the community that I was working in. That really sounds like I have found myself in Thailand, but they are beautiful, I love them. And they were only $2, which is the equivalent of like UK £1.70, I think. So I'm obsessed, I love them. Um, I've got to put them in for today's video. But yes, I, I'm not gonna ramble any longer. I will get straight into them. They are in no particular order. So first things first is to get used to a scent in the UK in your bed and then replicate that when you're away. So if you have trouble sleeping, which I don't normally, but I thought I would try and do this just in case, I started putting tea tree oil on my bed in the UK a couple of months before I came out. Just a couple of drops every night on my pillow. I'll show you the one that I have. So I have this one. Um, it was a couple of pounds from Amazon and before I came, before I left the UK, I just sprinkled a few drops on my pillow. So I kind of mentally associated this smell with sleep. And then I do the same here and touch wood, I've had no trouble sleeping. I actually think I'll take this kind of tip anywhere I go when I'm traveling as well, because it is super useful. That is tip number one. My second tip is to bring loads of snacks from home if you're away for a long time. So I had a big WH Smith carrier bag, specifics there on brand because they're pretty big for a bag, full of snacks from home. I had sweets, chocolate, go-ahead bars, um, other cereal bars, biscuits, you name it, I had it if it could keep. And that was so nice when I was kind of settling in. Um, now they've all run out, so about four weeks in they all went. But it meant that I could have home, home food whilst I was out in the field and things I knew would not be dodgy on my tummy because the food when you go to a new place can be kind of tricky. So yeah, bring loads of home snacks, but make sure that they won't melt or won't kind of go off while you're traveling. Also, sweets are good for a sugar brush in the field, so always make sure I have a little bag of sweets or something in my backpack when I'm out. My next tip is to get a really good travel kit system, suitcase, what have you. I actually flew with four bags, I will insert a photo, but my Osprey backpack actually combines to form one. So the small backpack is 20 litres and it zips onto the bigger, I think it's 50 or 60 litre bag. So that actually only ends up being one backpack, which is amazing. And then I had one suitcase in each arm. So it was so much easier than having a backpack on my front, one on my back, or whatever, try and get a combination bag or try and carry as little as possible. I had two suitcases that were full of equipment because I had microphones and batteries and butterfly traps for some of my experiments, but either pack light or make a system that works really well for you with carrying luggage, especially if you're traveling alone like me. Okay, next up is to bring loads of socks. I was told this before I came and I was like, oh, whatever, like I'll just bring enough and a couple spare. No. Socks will get ruined on average two times a day. You need to change them. They get wet, you get sweaty, your shoes get muddy, I don't know, whatever. I always carry two spare pairs of socks with me because even in wellies, sometimes I put my foot in a stream and my boot is fully submerged. So then the welly is null and void and it's soggy. So always carry loads of extra socks with you. I wish I brought more with me. And also you never know when you're gonna get your laundry back if you sent it to be cleaned. So it's always worth having a few extra pairs. Another thing to bring lots of is chargers. Annoyingly, my toothbrush charger has just broken. I charge it normally in its case. It's a really cool toothbrush, but it's now broken. So it's out of action, which means I'm either gonna to have to use a manual toothbrush for two months, which I'm not used to, or buy a new toothbrush. So bring spares of everything. You'll not know which ones will break, also, I have bought so many spare, like, 
battery packs on phone chargers. I have three and I have six chargers for them. Three of them have already broken because they got wet in the field. So make sure that you bring lots of chargers. I have like four iPhone chargers with all different outputs, a crazy amount of leads, but it's been so worth it, especially for like giving to other people in the field if they're helping you. It's super useful to have a lot. So bring as many as you can. Big tip there. Next up is to bring printouts of all your documentation. So I have printouts of my driving license, my passport, my emergency contacts. They stay on me at all times. I also have a copy of my insurance document printed out that stays in my bag. And I have itineraries so that people know if my bag is found, where I'm likely to be found or the other way around. Things like my participant information sheets for interviews always kept on me a two page document that summarizes my research and my thesis that I can give to people if they are kind of asking about my work. It's in English and Spanish. So have printouts of everything that you think you'll need. And if you're gonna go through security at the airport with all of your equipment, but you're not sure about the security at the other side. So I had to go by a Bogota to Quito. I was really stressed about having so many batteries and uh, audio moths. I'll insert a photo, a photo of what my microphones look like. They look a bit shady to take on a plane. I was terrified that I was going to be stopped and questioned in Spanish. I printed an inventory or an inventory, yeah, I don't know how you say it, but of all of the equipment that I had on me, receipts, the brands, where I bought them, the number, everything. That put my mind at ease because I could just point to it. That was also printed in Spanish. If I was stopped, it wasn't. So if you're stressed, take this as reassurance that you're unlikely to get stopped. I carried 160 AA batteries with me and they didn't bat an eyelid. So yeah, just make sure that you have printouts of whatever you can and keep them on you in a waterproof case if you are somewhere that rains a lot, like Ecuador in the rainforest. Next up is to pack and repack carefully. So I actually had to move Airbnb and move back and I ended up just throwing all of my things in my case, which was such a mistake. I wish I had packing cubes. I wish I had more dry bags. I have a couple and they are vital, but I normally keep them in my backpack ready for days in the field when it's raining. Um, I also have, on a bit of a tangent, I also have bag covers for my big backpack and my small backpack. They are like five pounds each and they just make them completely waterproof. I would definitely recommend them if you are carrying devices with you, like me. I, on average, I'm carrying like my laptop and four tablets a day for interviews. So have bag covers for the water. But in other news, take back packing cubes. They are vital. I normally have them in my like holiday case I just didn't have enough for this trip. I wish I'd borrowed some from a friend or something. Next up is to relax and remind yourself that it will start slowly. I am like six weeks in and I don't even have 10% of my interviews done yet, but you have to stay positive. Remind yourself that you're in a new place, it takes time to settle in, to make contacts, and then things will start coming. So this week coming, I'm hoping to get about a quarter of my interviews done, which will be amazing and then over the next couple of weeks, more and more. So relax and remind yourself that things start slowly. You need to build relationships before you start deploying equipment or working with people. So really make sure that you don't dedicate time to that. Also, maybe have a different project on the side as well, if you can afford it with the time. So in the evenings, I've been working on a separate project that I have as well, and doing some social media to have a little bit of productivity elsewhere, because it can be really hard to Kind of stay positive when things seem to be going super slowly. We're on to the next page. And I've only been recording for 10 minutes, so this should be a pretty quick video. Okay, next up is to practice with all of your equipment at home before you come, if you have some. So I showed you the audio moths earlier. They are pretty tricky to use, and I wish that I'd gotten used to them at home before I brought them into the field. I was told to by one of my advisors, and I was like, oh, no, I'll be able to do them. No. I also really struggled to set up camera traps, and two weeks of data didn't work. So make sure that you practice at home when you have people around you that can help, so that you get really used to the methodologies of using them. That is something that I wish I had done more of. On a similar tangent, if you're using equipment with batteries, make sure you bring good batteries. They always have less voltages than they say, so try and plan with a day or two minus from what your equipment says it will use so that you know when to go and change batteries. Also, invest in expensive ones, they are so worth it, and if you can, get rechargeable. I couldn't here because I couldn't fly with that, that amount of lithium batteries, but if you can get rechargeable, it is so much better for the planet.
Next up is to bring gifts or cards for people who are helping you with your field work. So I have bought a couple of cards from just the airport in England and I'm going to write them as thank yous to the NGOs that I'm working with here. And I wish I bought gifts. I did this again in March. I forgot them and then this time I was just in such a stress before I came, I didn't bring them. But I think I'm going to sort something out here, like a hamper or something, because people in your fieldwork country will help you more than you'll ever know. They might have been putting me in contact with communities, with other people. They have been vital in my setup days and my equipment change days. So don't underestimate the amount people will help and make sure that you can repay them, whether it be financially or with something a little more thoughtful, like normally people bring tea from the UK or something like that. But yeah, make sure that you have something to show your gratification to the people who are helping you. Especially if you're working with communities or remote people, uh, they often love food from international countries because they haven't had things like that before. Next up is to bring flip flops or crocs. I've been wearing my crocs more than I imagined. Um, you can use them in grotty showers. If your feet get wet, you can take your boots off and just have them to let your feet dry. They're vital and they're really great for not getting bitten or stung by things on the bottom of your feet. So definitely make sure you pack something like that. They're also super good for the airport and the aeroplane because you can get up and walk in them really quickly. Next up is to bring loads of hand gel and baby wipes. If you're working somewhere in the mud or in the forest or something, you're bound to get grubby hands and hand gel alone will just end up smearing the hand sanitizer around. So I make sure I carry baby wipes to get the majority of it off. Then I use hand gel and I'm using hand gel so many times, my hands are so dry now, but just make sure you have lots of it. It's also great to share around if you guys are gonna be eating. Following that is to have a really, really good first aid kit, especially if you're working somewhere remotely or that you know the hospitals aren't that efficient. I will go and get mine that I bought with me. So mine is from a brand called Nomad. Mine is from a brand called Nomad Travel. Um, this was actually recommended to me by my best friend, Bryony. Um, she worked in Zambia and she took this one with her. It came with so much, but I also added some more. So before I came away actually last time in March to Ecuador, I had an infection and I had to be prescribed antibiotics for that time in case it came back when I was really remote in the Amazon. Luckily it didn't, but I bought the uh, antibiotics with me just in case it did. Um, this also comes with spare cannulas, needles, all sorts of things that you could need in a hospital. Uh, it comes with rehydration sachets, water purification, plasters, literally everything. I think it was about £60, but it was so worth it. And this will be really helpful even in the UK as well. It also comes with other types of antibiotics in it. So these are for infections of the skin, I think. You can get in, there are antibiotics in here that are for infections of completely different things, the mouth, all sorts, 100, 100% recommend. There's burn things, cut things, antihistamines, all sorts. I obviously added some more stuff. So I added loads of paracetamol, ibuprofen, my super strength antihistamines. I added Mike Relief, um, all sorts get a good first aid kit 60 pounds is nothing for your overall health next up is to check your vaccines before you come and see if your university will pay for them for you annoyingly my uni don't because i'm self-funded which makes no sense to me um but i had to get yellow fever to come to ecuador and i also chose to get three rabies shots and i got typhoid as well i have previously had hep a and hep b and all of the traditional vaccines that you get as a child. So yes, check your vaccines, make sure you get what you need. I would recommend getting the rabies shots if you can. It gives you extra time if you are bitten by something that is rabbit. This is on a completely different topic, but take nice outfits with you. Often on field work, you meet people when you end up going out for dinner or to conferences. By chance, there is a really relevant com conference here for me on Nature Based Solutions in Quito next week super exciting and I'm going there and I'm so glad that I bought a couple of nicer outfits that aren't just going to get trashed and muddy in the field. So one of them is actually this skirt which I love. It's This is actually from Zara. It's a midi skirt normally but I bought a couple of nicer dresses and stuff. You never know where you're going to end up and sometimes you just want to put on a nicer outfit than usual so definitely make sure you have a couple that you can turn to and one pair of shoes that isn't completely trashed.
Next up is to check your visa requirements as well as your vaccination requirements. I got super, super, super stressed out about this before I came and I delayed my trip, delayed my trip, delayed my trip. But in the end, I just had to come with the visa kind of sorting it out as I'm here. Definitely check before you come, look at it like at least six months in advance. Often you need to go to the embassy and the consulate and all sorts. So definitely, definitely look, call them or email them and pester the embassy if you need to. It's super, super important. You don't want to get stopped and turned away at customs in your field work country. Next up is an in the country thing, but take the taxi number of somebody that you know and trust. So if you've got a taxi and you feel comfortable when you're in the taxi and you're safe back at your hotel, ask, you can take their number and their name, add it to your phone and just add the location that you got that taxi from. And then next time, give them a call. I've made sure that I have one here in Quito, in the city that I'm working in, so it's a separate place. Um, nearby villages, I've got one or two in each. Even better if they speak your language. It's so reassuring to know that somebody you trust is coming and you know they're not gonna overcharge you. Also, it's great for them if you can kind of strike up a business, if you're gonna be using taxis a lot, it's much better for their business and they'll be really happy to help. That's something that's really put my mind at ease because public transport here is not very safe. Next up is to bring loads of hard drives or as many as you can. Replicate your data on at least two hard drives or store it in the cloud. The worst thing would be to lose all of your data or it corrupt when you're away. So make sure that you back it up and save it in numerous places. Next up and second to last, I think, is to have a really, really good anti-mosquito spray. So uh, you'll have seen in my last Instagram video, I think, I'll put my app on screen if you don't follow me. So many more for work tips over there, shameless self promo. Um, but my, I don't know if you can see, my legs have been bitten to shreds by mosquitoes and bugs and ants and all sorts. They get so painful, they're okay now actually at the moment, but they get so painful and so scratchy. Make sure you have really, really high quality anti-mosquito spray or ask the communities what they use to stop mosquito bites. They all know best, they might have oils and stuff that they can put on. I know some people here in Ecuador use cooking oil, which is crazy, but they just rub it on their wrists and their ankles. So either ask locals or bring lots with you. I bought two super strength deep sprays. They are awful for the environment, but they're also vital for you to stay safe and to try and avoid malaria and things like that. Another tip, look whether you need antimalarials or something to do with dengue or um, leishmaniasis, stuff like that. Look for the diseases that are around, but make sure that you have yeah good quality repellent or spray or something that can help you. And finally, bring more money than you think you need. This is not so important if you are not self-funded, but if you are self-funded like me, make sure you have a good reserve of cash. You'll have a great insurance policy via a uni, so make sure you take advantage of that. Fill out all of your risk assessments and get all of your insurance in place before you come. Obviously, that goes without saying. But in case of emergencies, make sure you have a couple of hundred dollars or pounds or euros or whatever it is safe that you can access at any point. It is vital to have enough cash on you. Hide it somewhere in your hotel room, in the safe or somewhere. Just make sure you have access to more money than you think you'll need. The likelihood is that you'll never need it, but it's really reassuring to know that you can if you have to. I think that is all of my field work tips. I hope some of them were useful for you. I'm sure I will think of more and share them on my Instagram as they pop into my brain. But thank you so much for watching. And if you're going on field work soon, have the best time. I'm already jealous of those of you who have longer field work since than me because I'm loving mine so far. But yeah. Have a lovely week and I will see you very soon. Adios.